he sees shots. He's not just seeing distance and let I me mean, just bomb it down there and try to do it. He's, he's seeing a shape, uh, a trajectory. You can only really do that if you're trying to create a shot shape and you have to sort of back off and sacrifice some distance in order to pull that off. I feel bad calling it a slap slice. Slap cut, slap slice. I mean, sometimes it is slicing, sometimes it's cutting. How would you describe your confidence level in hitting the slap slice? My little slap cut, slap slice, I feel very comfortable hitting. It's, it's a natural shot with my physical limitations now with my driver. And so that is a shot that it's very comfortable on my body. It's just so easy for me to do. Now, working it the other way is a little bit harder and depends on how I'm feeling. But that little cut is just easy on my body and I, I can repeat it. Generally, it's down the stretch. I don't really tend to draw the ball that often. Um, I tend to cut it just get the ball in play, not really stress out about getting it really down there that far. Hitting a little control cut to me is basically almost like hitting an iron shot. Uh, I tee the ball down a little bit lower. I like hitting down on my drivers. I always have. It's easy for me to do. Hitting up on them is a little harder for me to do. It's never been something I've been really good at, uh, but hitting f zeroed or slightly down on a driver is very easy for me. Late Late 90s, early 2000s is when I really tried to learn how to do it. I did it differently then because my body was moving differently. Here now, I don't have to, I don't have the speed like I used to, so I've gone a little bit more loft to be able to hit that shot and keep it up there and, and still cut it. So the draw was up there. So try and get that as much of the ball as possible above the crown. If I want to hit one low and cut it, I try and get most of that ball below the crown. And so that's like a perfect cut for me. I can hit down on it. I have plenty of space to have the driver even click the grass on the way through. On my bottom of my drivers, um, especially in the early 2000s, you see grass stains on the bottom of my drivers from basically hitting down on it and clipping off the top of the grass like that. As the drivers have gotten bigger and deeper, it's a little bit harder to do. Uh, but I try and, and replicate that as much as I possibly can. I think that's sort of the veteran <laughs> PGA Tour player uh, approach. If you're young and you're trying to attack a golf course all over the place, you might get enough good lies and you might um, put together an incredible round here and there, even if you miss 10 fairways. And then over the course of you know, 15, 20 events a season, well, what are the odds of you playing well that way? I think he's, he's realized, like most veterans, that you, you play the more conservative way. I'm like probably most kids, was enamored with high hooks, trying to run it out there and hit it further. And uh, playing the tour and, or top amateur golf and then playing the tour early on in my career, that wasn't going to be the case. Uh, it's about more control than it is about hitting high hooks. And uh, yeah, I've been able to hit more controlled cuts than I have high hooks. I'm seeing this ball start off along the tree line, the last tree on the, on the left-hand side, the kind of lone tree in the middle of that bunker. And I would tee that ball pretty much right there. Got plenty of room to hit down on it. As I build a stance, it's more left, obviously than a, a draw but I'd, I'd like hitting more of a, a pull cut. And so I don't really, my, one of my tendencies is to aim too far left and I start having to, I, having to scoop it. I like, feel like I can have it start maybe, maybe a yard or two left of where I'm aiming. And so I'm able to pull, pull across it and down on it like I would an iron shot. And so that's one of my feels. So I'm gonna hit a little cut here. A little, Slap cut up the left side. I'm gonna aim it middle of that bunker, but I'm gonna start on that lone tree there. So I'm gonna build that stance, middle of that bunker, when I feel like I hit down on it, and pull it just ever so slightly. Wind is just cropped up off the left, so it gives me a little bit more opportunity to pull it a little bit more.
the wind's coming off the left, it's, it's a hard shot for me to hit because it's, it's running with that wind quite a bit. And so I don't really hit that shot very often with the wind off the left. Wind off the right, absolutely. Use that backboard and hit it right up against it. All day. Easy. I got that shot. Golf fans talk about your stinger a lot. There's a lot of shot traces of the stinger. Um, is there any story behind learning that shot and how that shot came about? Learning the stinger was basically learning how to flight my wedges better and learn how to stop it shorter and get my wedges to flight better. And it crept into getting a shot in play, whether back then it was a two iron off the tee. One of the great lessons I ever got <laughs> was from Jackie Burke. Uh, I was playing the 92 US Amateur and uh, he sees me hitting a golf ball on the range. And I'm, I know who Jackie is, I mean, one of the masters and this is his club and I'm just hitting it everywhere. And he walks up to me, you better tee that ball down, kid. Why is that, sir? Well, the longer the ball's in the air, the longer it has more time to go crooked. And trust me, you need to keep that ball down. I'm like, oh. I'm like, okay. That is one of the things that hitting that ball down is inevitably was it started in my short irons, got in my two iron, got in my three wood, got in my driver, um, and just kind of spread throughout the entire bag. Here we are with my three iron stinger. It's uh, one of my go-to shots, yeah, I'm sure. It, most of you have seen this shot. The shot I'll play quite often just to get the ball in play, whether it's a three iron, four iron, or it's a five with three, or even sometimes a driver. Uh, it's the same kind of shot. Because I'm hitting down on it, I'm try, I like hitting a, a low draw with this one. So the more, the more back I play it, obviously the more draw I'm gonna have on, on it. So I go back just a little bit of my stance, really try and feel as if I make a normal backswing. I still get behind the ball, still load the right leg, but I really try and feel like this right shoulder gets on top of that golf ball. It feels high, it feels like it's covered. And I'll, one of the things that depends on how far I want to get down there or how, how low I want to hit it is how much I'll take out on the follow through. And sometimes that's one of the things that I may hit it you know, quite short, but it's at the trajectory that I want. So I'll hit down on it, but I'll stop it quickly here. It's not gonna go as far, but it's gonna have a low height. It'll be lower than tree height out there. So it gets, stays out of the wind, never gets above the tree height. It'll go a little bit further, it'll be a little bit higher. It'll be right on tree height. So I really try and feel like I cover it, I get on top of it, and then I'll, sh I'll shut it off after that. For a little flighted stinger draw here, I'm gonna obviously hit the ball from right to left. It's gonna be low, it's gonna be flat. I like playing a little further back in my stance, maybe a ball, ball and a half back in my stance. Really trying to feel that my right shoulder stays high. I get behind it, stay high with my right shoulder. And then if I cut it off here, it's gonna be pretty, pretty low. Uh, if I go a little bit further, it's gonna be a little higher. There we go. He loves having the ball played on the ground. If Tiger could, he would play most tournaments like he's playing at St. Andrews all the time. And sometimes that two iron shot will only carry a little over 200 yards in the air, but at a British Open, it could run 290. 300 sometimes because it's so firm and so fast. Um, and Tiger loves to, um, you know, play the ball on the ground, use the slopes. It does bring in that creativity, that artistry, um, you know, being able to utilize contours and, and not try to just fly a ball right to a spot. I feel like if I hit a lot of fairways, for me, if I get, if I get a lot of fairways, I get, you know, 10, 10 fairways a day or 11 fairways a day, 
I like my chances with the irons in my hands, uh, clean lies that many times over a 72 hole period. I like my chances. How low can you actually keep the ball down with a stinger? So I can pretty much keep it around tree height level. And that's inevitably what I end up trying to do is not get the ball above the trees. Yeah. You know, I grew up in the era where we played blotta. And the blotta balls, you know, so low launch, high kick. And so playing in that era allowed me to hit those shots and inevitably keep the ball down. And uh, I gravitate towards that shot more often than I do a higher shot. Uh, just, I think, probably because of the era that I ended up growing up in. There are more scenarios in which I need a 5-wood now than I would a 2-iron. If I want to hit one high, pull up the ball, one ball further forward in my stance, stay behind it, and really try and feel like my like hands move past my body. I'm always doing something with the golf ball. Slight cuts, slight draws. I'm just maneuvering the ball, even if it's like a few feet in the air. I think it all starts with hitting the ball flush. 